that, that you would want to talk about besides the visiting of the homes? Is there any other component that's going to make education better in these target schools? You know, there's three aspects to the Shechem Compact, uh, or three levels of operation, if you will. The compact itself is uh, among uh, Austin Interfaith, uh, Austin Independent Schools, uh, Aero, the Austin Area Research Organization, which is made up of the CEOs of a number of uh, large employer employers in the area, and uh, also the city. Uh, the mayor has been uh, part of it with us. The three elements, uh, one is what we've been talking about at the elementary school level, the home visitation. Uh, we have a Shechem parental involvement report card that we give to parents on the recognition of uh, kids who are on the honor roll. We also are developing in the two pilot schools, uh, Allison Elementary in Montopolis and Blackshire Elementary um, over close to Mount Olive and Guadalupe uh, churches, um, where we want to also in those schools set up a strategy team with the principal, the teachers, uh, parents, and the pastors. And that strategy team would help run the school, would have a real voice in the operation and, and vision for that particular individual schools. Uh, also, at the uh, other end of the school, uh, age-wise, we're working with the business community to set up a program that uh, kids who would qualify as Shechem scholars, uh, they would have to qualify in terms of a certain poverty level. Uh, we haven't exactly figured out what factor we want to use yet because we haven't started that part. But they would sign up as Shechem scholars, and if they maintain a 95% attendance rate, above average grades, uh, and graduate and do well, they can choose upon their graduation uh, to take a job or a scholarship. And the business community would be setting aside jobs that would pay above the minimum wage for those that don't want to go on to college um, or else a job that's career oriented. And the idea is you want to be able to tell those kids, look, if you stay in school, mm -hmm. you're going to make more money than the kid who drops out and gets minimum wage. Those kids that want to go on to college, we'd like to set up uh, an endowment fund where if they want to continue the education, we would certainly encourage that, uh, they would have the money to go on. So money would not be a factor. The other element is to do some strategic planning with the business community uh, in terms of the future. And it's kind of an ongoing dialogue. But it's those three areas, the elementary school, the high school area, and then the strategic planning. Mm -hmm. And of course, for business, it would be crucial to have a educated workforce and, uh, and, a, and a real opportunities uh, for growth of business, I would think, that that's one of the reasons you locate in Austin is because of the workforce. Well, I'm talking with the business community. One of the factors that's always involved when a, a company is thinking of locating here, is there a pool of workers that we can draw from? Are there people who uh, we're going to be able to hire? Uh, one of the things they look at is education. Uh, basic skills, uh, attendance at school. In fact, they consider attendance at school as being more important than even the grades themselves. And their thinking is if you don't show up for school, you're not going to show up regularly for work. Mm -hmm. uh, but in a certain sense, uh, this is a real advantage to the business community because it's helping to provide that pool of workers that will be available. Now, would the principals and administrators, for example, at Allison, your closest school, or at Blackshear, would they be in favor of this parental involvement? What has your experience been? Yeah, they've been very supportive. In fact, that was one of the criteria when we looked around at what schools would be the ones to work with. Uh, we had talked with uh, Dr. Ellis, we had talked with uh, the school board, but then we also talked to individual uh, principals, and we asked them quite frankly, Are you, do you really want to do this? Uh, is this something you're really willing to commit to? And the two principals uh, at Allison and Blackshire have been very supportive and helpful. I, I know that uh, many people are interested in um, this question of not only education, but the great dropout uh, rate in Austin. I know that this channel uh, uh, here that's broadcasting this program is very interested. I know that uh, the Austin Metropolitan Ministries that sponsors this program is very interested, and now we're learning about Austin Interfaith. And I've read statistics that say that, uh, that Austin is unique in the sense that it has so many college graduates here, 
as many as a, a third of all adults have a college education. But the problem is that the bottom third of the economic uh, ladder are dropouts. So we, we really have a split, it seems to me, in the Austin community between those who are well-educated and those who have not had opportunity for education at all. And I think that your uh, program here really directly addresses uh, how to stay and keep children in school, give them incentives and rewards, and can look beyond, uh, you know, the immediate minimum wage to, to work for a good life for themselves and their children. Sister Rose, um, you have been involved in this uh, program directly. Have you gone into any of the homes to, to visit with the parents or into the school? Yes, during the summer I went to visit because we knew, I knew that we were going to start doing this, so I went to visit some of the parents and some of the children do live with their grandparents and some of them do not know how to read. And uh, sometimes they don't go to the schools because they're afraid because they don't know how to act or how to ask questions. And I think that with this program, we can help them to be able to uh, acquire some skills to, to do that and to take that fear of them. And I believe that if they know and they see that there's um, cooperation between the principals, teachers, and, and uh, the leaders, then this would make it a lot easier for them to, to become more involved with their child's education. Have you seen parents then uh, respond to this kind of thing? Uh, Father John mentioned about the report card. Uh, how, do you think parents are intimidated or afraid about having to uh, check themselves on how well they're doing and involving in, in involvement with the school? When we first presented it to a group of parents, there was a little bit of hesitant. And I think that the one who enjoyed it the most was the children, because once they say, well, now it's our time for our parents to get a report card too. But uh, once they heard in the explanation and um, what are some of the things that they were supposed to do, like for instance, provide time and space for their child to be able to study, uh, sit down with them once in, a, once in a while to read or encourage them to uh, do their homework, uh, to turn off the TV. Also, we encourage them to uh, look in the neighborhood. What are some of the obstacles that um, prevent the children or make the children afraid to go to school? And once these things were explained to the parents, they, they find it very helpful because at least now they have uh, some guidelines or things to check themselves. Am I doing this or what else can I do for my child? Nothing that, that will help a lot and he's helping them. Mm -hmm. And the other home visitors who are doing, which are the teachers and some of the parents, they've also come with a lot of positive um, responses or stories from parents that they have visited. Of course, there's always a negative, but <laughs> we can overcome that. It seems like a really good model that you would be visiting, that parents would be visiting, uh, uh, be visited first of all, and then visiting the school, working mm -hmm. with the administrators in the school, and giving those rewards for the children. And I think it also provides the opportunity for the teachers to also find out where the children are coming from, what's going on in their home environment, and, and that helps them how to deal with the attitudes that the, ch that the child might have in school. And I think that that's, very, that's something that's very crucial and very important uh, to be an effective teacher or an educator, to really know what is, where the child is coming from. And I think that these home visitings will provide that if we really, you know, everybody uh, participates in it. Mm -hmm. Father John, um, let me ask a, a bigger question than uh, this is a particular model and very important for our community. But I would like to come back again to the question of the church. Why should a church be involved in this kind of what is called secular activity? Why, it seems to me that some people's notion of church is where you go to pray and where you kind of, it's separate from school or work or other things. How, what's your vision of 
of, of how to be, belong to a church or how, what a church could do uh, to help people? Well, there's, there's a couple ways of, of looking at it. Uh, one is, uh, in a certain sense, the church is self-interest. Uh, and you can look at it at that level. If, uh, for instance, in our, our parish, but that would be true of all the congregations, particularly in the East Side, if we don't help those families in the East Side, uh, if our kids continue to drop out, and if they then are unemployed, uh, how do we support those churches? We simply literally go out of business. So we have a real self-interest in the thing down the line. Uh, another element it would be a little bit more theological and appropriate, uh, too, would be the fact that uh, we have a mission to the world, and we have a relationship to the world. Uh, we're Christians not just on Sunday morning, but throughout the week. And uh, we believe that, that, that God created the world, and he, he wants us to be part of his work of continuing to create it, to continue to redeem it, to work in those areas where um, human dignity is not yet recognized, uh, where there are people in real need. Uh, we have a mission to that. And uh, that's the basis of the Last Judgment. It wasn't merely, did you show up on Sunday, uh, but did you help those people in need? And uh, ultimately, our eternal salvation is a very important religious question for all of us. So that helping, uh, as a community, uh, helping people, not just an individual, but, for example, your church has many members that are involved in this project, mm -hmm. uh, the education project. Uh, do you think that there's a stronger unity when, when the whole church gets behind a program, or...? Oh, absolutely. In yeah. fact, that we're all very accustomed to the church doing that. I mean, we get together on Sunday because we're supposed to pray and live out the ministry of Christ the King. Uh, we get together and have religious education because as a church, as Christians, we, we, we are supposed to teach the gospel and pass on the faith, and so we organize to do that. Uh, we organize to pray, we organize to teach, and we have to organize to serve, to live out the mission of, of Christ the King. Um, so we do that as a community. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important that the 30 churches would be united together to make a difference, it seems to me, rather than each church doing its own thing or each church being very isolated. It seems the 30 churches can have a real impact and that would be the value of Austin Interfaith or the value of the uh, Austin Metropolitan Ministries that sponsors this particular program that we try to come together as religious communities, religious congregations. Sister Rose, I think I'll give you the, the last word here. Uh, have you enjoyed uh, working for many years in, this, in Montopolis at, at Dolores Catholic Church? Yes, I have. I've seen it grow. And uh, when I look back, I see the children that we've had and how some of them have gone. And uh, some of them have made good with their lives and some of them have not. And um, I enjoyed it very much, especially working with the youth, because when you see them with this energy and this desire to become something better, not only for the money that they will receive, but what uh, good they can do for society, um, that gives me great satisfaction and uh, just knowing that they're, they're really interested in themselves and that I have been part of that. Mm -hmm. So it's really been a good experience and I hope that it continues. <laughs> and you have another sister working with you, don't you, yes, from your uh, community? Yes, Sister Olivia. She's also been there. We came both together from um, right after we finished our religious training, we were sent to the Montopolis area and we've been working both together. She also works in the social concerns department, mm -hmm. which is like Caritas or welfare. I think it's wonderful that, all, that both of you work so hard in Montopolis at Dolores Parish. And I would like to just uh, conclude the program by, by saying that this Shechem project that we have talked about uh, could help us all be more involved in the education of the children. And I wish to thank you, Sister Rose, and you, Father John, for being here to share with us about this Shechem Compact. And on behalf of Austin Metropolitan Ministries, I am Father Peter Logsdon thanking you 
for joining us. And I invite, invite you to tune in next week at the same time for another edition of Austin Faith Dialogue. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may the Lord grant you peace.